I've started looking at tables this week on the M8 and I thought I'd show you a practical example of how we can use a table by setting up a very corny but simple side chain effect using a bass drum or kick drum if you like and a chord being played by a synth. So you've heard this sort of thing before, if I play it you'll understand what I'm talking about. So we've all heard that many, many times before, the classic pumping chord. And the way we can set this up is by use of a table. Now, in this song, I've got two tracks, tracks one and two. Track one is the kick drum and track two is the chord, the synth. And on track one, we've got chain 10 and inside chain 10, we've got four phrase tens. And inside phrase 10, we've got the classic uh, four on the floor bass drum pattern, kick drum pattern. If we go to the phrase 20, which is inside chain 20, we've got this. Now you notice it doesn't sound like it does when I play both the tracks together, and there is a reason for that, which we'll find out in a moment. What we have here in this isolated phrase is a quaver pattern of chords. So it's a chord on every other step, one and two and three and four. But we don't want it to sound like that, we want it to, to pump along with the kick drum. So how do we do that? On this instrument I've turned the amp up a bit to give it a bit more oomph and I've turned up the chorus and the reverb. So it's a very very straightforward sound that attacks very quickly, nothing strange about it at all and it's perfect for our needs. We're going to use a table. Now the thing you have to understand about tables is that they are assigned to instruments. They are not assigned to phrases or chains. Okay, so instrument 01 in this tune is this kick drum. If I go over to the table just by holding shift and right till I get there, you can see what I have here is this FX1 VT2. Now if I hold that down, just go up to that and have a look, it says track 2 volume. Okay, so what this is doing, it's sending a volume signal to track two, remember I'm on track one, table 01, but I'm going to be sending a volume command to track two on every single step of this table. On the first step, the volume is set at 10, and then 20, and then 20, and 30, and 40, and gradually getting louder and louder. So basically what we have here is a, a surge of volume. How does it work? And it's all to do with the table tick speed. Now the table tick speed is not in the table. If you look here you can't see it can you? So you've got to go back to the instrument and look up here and you'll see it says here table tick is 01. Basically it means it's going six times faster than the phrases. So that means if you look at the table you'll see it's flashing past much faster than the actual speed of the phrase and that's key to making this work. So basically every time the kick drum sounds the table will send that swell of volume to track 2 giving it that pumping side chaining effect. And the way it works is the table will start from the top every time it hears a note from the kick drum instrument. Now when the second kick drum sounds the table returns to its beginning and the process starts again. I mean all this is happening incredibly fast, you can't follow it with a naked eye really. So this is why I'm breaking it down like this. So at this table tick speed of 01, which is the fastest of all, six times faster than the normal speed of the phrase, obviously things move pretty quickly on the table and that information is sent out very, very quickly to the target track, in this case track two. And that's how we get that quick surge of volume each time. So that's just a little bit about using tables that I've done today. I've only done this simple example, but it's quite useful, isn't it? In subsequent videos, I'll show you how we can use tables to produce little extra sequences of notes on top of the main sequence of notes in the phrases. 
So I hope you found that interesting. Thank you very much for watching and you will see me in my next video.